Oh, goodness. That's, that's a good memory. I'd never loved a man before. I liked a lot of guys. I never was in love before. Actually, we met and were married within six months. When our boys were born, I, I was just, I, I, thrilled is not the correct word. It, 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 uh, and I don't believe in miracles, so miracle isn't the correct word. It's, it was just um, a dream that came true. Listen to me, is he breathing? No, no. He's not breathing? No. All right, stay on the phone with me a minute. Come on. I gotta call my mom. Okay, you need to stay on the phone with me for now, okay? I gotta call my mom. No, you need to stay on the phone with me. Okay. Uh, come on. Come on. People say, well, you have memories. Mm, you have them, but it's not good enough. It's, it's right. And, and to say, well, again, well, at, least, at least you have your memories of your children when they were small. I go, well, no, that's not, that's, no, that's, that's not anything. That's, so it, it Nobody, actually. Nobody's ever said they want to trade with us. As far as I'm concerned, the media actually committed a, a crime. They absolutely jumped to conclusions the next day. And uh, so I consider what they did criminal. And another thing that really sticks out in my mind is the fact that the uh, media said that uh, I have raised two children, excuse me, not I, my husband and I have raised two children. One is a monster, Zach. One is a great kid, Greg. They contributed to the fact that, that my family, mostly my children, my husband, my, my relatives' lives were ruined. We're allowed to see Zach once a week, and we go uh, virtually uh, every week. And we have been doing that ever since he's been incarcerated over nine years ago weeks times nine years. I would say, no question, it's been over 400. Are you okay driving? Fine. Thank you. I hate this drive on all the time. Ron always stops here for coffee or and something else to eat, possibly. I usually drive home, yeah. And I would drive there, too. Um, but I, I gotta take the, the five-hour energy stuff. I have to take the five-hour energy just to go in and see Zach, because it's so depressing. Uh, that kind of gives me a little bit of a lift, and, I, and I'm not quite as depressed. He's definitely turned into a man, and we really, really didn't get, we really didn't get a chance to see that. Well, you learn one thing. Uh, people judge you. People that don't know you. And this was all from the newspaper, obviously. They, they, they immediately say, I've had, I've had people come up to me and, that say that your son's a murderer and get over it. Um, and it was very surprising to me. I don't think I expected that. I expected people to be kinder because as a parent, try to consider what we're going through and um, not be so critical 
of, of our family. Again, if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say it at all. Our immediate neighbors, uh, a couple of our immediate neighbors, and I say immediate, I mean in this block, were the worst of anybody. On October 2nd, 1998, at approximately 3.12 p.m. on a Friday afternoon. Entered here. His throat was slashed here. We know that from the autopsy. He actually collapsed here. Then somehow he was picked up, thrown into this table. This table was had blood on it, table broke. Four people, in actuality, were murdered on this spot. My younger son, Greg Whitman, was 13 years old, walked into the door of the house, and probably immediately had his throat slashed. They picked up Greg, they walked him through here, carried him through here, excuse me, carried him, hopped over this gate, which is very difficult to do with someone in your arms, uh, Greg certainly could not have hopped over that gate. My older son, after hearing some noise downstairs in a, in a scuffle, came down and found his brother slashed 104 times with his head almost cut off. This is our, this is our laundry room. When Zach found Greg, Greg was leaning more or less like this on the washing machine. And, and I don't know exactly his position because I've never been able to, to, to look at the photos. They wrongfully accused him and ultimately wrongfully convicted him after four and a half years of pretrial motions. So that instead of being a 15-year-old child in front of a jury, he was a 20-year-old man. And in the process, he essentially killed the parents as well. And that would be myself and my wife. We love each other, but Sue was mentioning, we, we cope differently. And it leads to a lot of arguments, which you know, makes us, in a lot of ways, roommates more than uh, husband and wife. Whenever I look at something, I go, what difference does it make? And you know, so a messy pile of papers, you know, it's, it's not going to bring my dead son back. It's not going to get my son out of jail. Um, it would make my life less, less aggravated at me. And, and, and I try and do it for that reason, but I'm unsuccessful. Uh, life doesn't mean a lot anymore, except, and the only thing that keeps me going, it's three words, and that is, and I, sorry, Sue, I don't mean this the way it sounds, but Zach deserves better. I mean, he basically lost his life at 15 years and three months. We have one thing in mind and one thing only, and that is to help our son. Even though my husband and I disagree, as he said, on many, many things, I still think that it's the love and the commitment and the uh, marriage. I'm a very strong believer in um, you made a commitment to each other, you have a family together, and, and up till 14 years ago, I could have never asked for a better husband or a better father to my children. Our, our reasons for not being happy together at times are not because we don't love each other, but because we have been placed into an incredibly difficult situation, an impossible situation, and it has torn us apart. But it hasn't torn apart the, the, the love that we have, it's just because it's there all the time and we don't deal with it the same, it's torn apart a lot of the relationship. I, I, yeah, I hate the day because of a lot of things. Number one, it's, it's a long drive to some place you don't want to go to. I don't mind long drives. It's just the stress of where you're going and 
what you're going to do, you know, why you're going to be there, and then driving home afterwards after hearing that damn steel door slam. Um, but I would rather be with Zach than not be with Zach because he's still my son. And Zach and I, when he was under house arrest, and not to say that we didn't do it before, but it's harder for me to remember, you know, what we did at the house together before. But we spent a lot of time watching TV together. And and I would I would bug him. I'd go sit right next to him and uh, yeah, give always. him noogies and, and I, don't I would just I, don't that. I, would I, don't, abs- I never did. Well it was it was always yeah, a, it was always, always a thing where, right. where you know Zach would go, Mom Yeah, and I'd always and, take And off Sue would say, Ron, Ron leave, leave him, him alone. alone. Yeah. And we still do that. And we still, yeah. When, when, we, when we get to the prison, I, I always hug him longer than he wants. He goes, right. he goes, that's okay. Yeah, I do that. That's okay. Lot. That's okay. And he's hugging him for 15 minutes. Right. But part of it is just to aggravate him, because that's what I do. And then sometimes when we're there, I'll put my arm around him and and hug him close to me, and he, he and he, you know, he's always squirming to get away. He gets nervous because well, you you're, not to, you're not right. supposed to you're not supposed to have too much that. physical right. contact with the inmate. Right, what's your name? I'm not Zach. Your name is Zach, your yeah. last name? Whitman. Whitman. Yeah. Okay. I gotta call my mom. Okay. She's at work. What's your phone number there, Zach? 7929-235-79. I hear him. Okay, they're on their way. I'm gonna go ahead and hang up with you. Okay. You're sure there's nobody else around? I don't see anyone. I don't see anyone. I didn't look. I don't want to look. I don't want to look. Listen to me a minute. Okay, you say you were upstairs and you heard a bang and that's it. Not a bang. It's Not like, a bang. You heard a like, loud like, noise. You just like suffering almost, like like rustling around. Yeah. And then, I, and then I come down the stairs and the door's cracked. He's just lying there. Just lying there. And the hardest thing, by far, is the, the end of the visit, and you know he's going to go, you know, behind those steel doors. Yeah, you hear that damn steel door slam. And sometimes you can watch them. Just depends upon how many people are there and you know where they are in the room as far as when everybody leaves. Well, sometimes you just wait till everybody leaves and they take the rest of the people in. And sometimes you can see it, and sometimes you can't see it. I just assume not see it, but I look over there all the time, and obviously I know where he's going. Is that the hardest part for you? Absolutely. No question. Yeah. Makes the day very hard. No question. It's just, it's, it's just a harsh, harsh reminder of where he lives his life and what our life has become.